Today, I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on museum buffs for season two legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms. Now with Thubos coming into the game and getting a relic right off the bat, it got me to thinking what happened to the rumors that came out a few months ago about the season two relics. There were a handful of YouTubers that talked about those leaks or those rumors. And it got me to thinking like, what would the relics look like for the season two commanders in this game? So today we're going to go over all eight season two commanders. And I'm going to be telling you guys what I think their relics should be in rise of kingdoms. And at the very end, I'm going to throw in one more commander that Lilith seems to have forgotten all about. So make sure you stick around until then. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about is whatever happened to those rumors, right? It seemed like a lot of credible YouTubers and people were talking about there being season two commander relics coming into the game. And I am one of the guys that talks about leaks quite a bit here on YouTube. Now, I talked about leaks so much, okay, that I literally got in trouble from Rise of Kingdoms, from Lilith, from the developers. It got to the point where I had to actually reach out to Lilith and have them talk to their legal team. And we we actually did reach an agreement. So thank you, Lilith, for that. There are no copyright strikes on this channel anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Shout out to Lilith. But despite that, okay, despite the fact that I'm always pushing the boundary on what I'm allowed to talk about here on YouTube and oftentimes pushing it too far, clearly, I still never covered those leaks. And the reason for that is because they just, they were terrible leaks it was obviously fake the photoshop was horrible and it was way too soon after the season one commanders got their relics so to me it was like a no-brainer like yeah obviously this is nothing so the rumors we know back then were fake just totally straight up I'm being real with you there are no rumors or leaks at this time so then we have to ask ourselves well okay well what makes us think that the season two commanders are even going to get museum buffs right some of these commanders are already pretty good we have Alexander the Great here we have Saladin these are commanders that people still use in season of conquest so technically there's no guarantee that season two commanders will ever get relics it could be the case that season one commanders are going to be the only commanders that ever get museum buffs unless we already kind of know that the season two legendaries are going to be getting relics okay let's take a look here at the probability of us getting season two legendary relics the first thing we have to ask ourselves is do players want it and the answer is obviously yes okay the reason you clicked on this video is because you want it deep down that's the reason why the rumors went around in the first place and i think that the original relics for like minamoto for example were pretty well received we also saw a pretty nice little boost in Mehmed getting used and I think that's generally good for the game so I don't think it's unreasonable to say that most players who've been playing for a while would like to see the season two commanders get a nice little buff okay so the next thing we have to ask is is it easy to implement it from a developer perspective right like if something's too hard to implement then Lilith probably isn't going to do it but if it's easy then they probably will and I think it's safe to say that because they've already done all the hard work of implementing the museum in the first place all the hard work is already done okay so implementing more relics is not going to be hard for them at this point it's just it's just as easy as throwing in new relics into a system that they've already built they've already built out the, the the coins and ways that you can get them with bundles and all sorts of other things so the system is already in place and it would be easy for Lilith to do this which increases the probability that it'll happen arguably the most important thing though is will it make Lilith money and with that I would say absolutely yes now one thing that you could argue is that like the season two commanders are are already pretty good right I mean Alexander I mean come on Alexander is still in my opinion I released a YouTube short the other day go ahead and check it out if you missed it but he made my top 10 lists of all legendary commanders in the game so you can make the argument that because they're already so good if Lilith releases buffs to these commanders in the museum then people are going to be less likely to spend money on new commanders like Boudicca Prime for example or maybe like Nevsky or Scipio right because people could just use their old commanders and just put throw the relic on there and I, I get what you're saying but at the same time these new commanders are so much more powerful like Nevsky and CPO and Boudicca they're so much better that I think people are still going to be spending their sculptures to get those commanders and on top of that because we're talking about Lilith making money you have to remember that if they buff the old commanders they're in the daily special offer for older kingdoms okay so that just means that more people are going to be buying these commanders in the daily special bundles like right now i have no reason to buy tamiris okay i i just don't there's just no reason for me to do that especially when you have like guan yu and attila in here like there's just no point but if tamiris got a really powerful museum buff 
well then maybe I want to speed up the number of sculptures of her that I'm getting and thus I would start to spend more money and that's not even to talk about the fact that there's a super value bundle the echo of history which would give me the coins I would need to unlock that museum uh, relic immediately right so there's already ways for Lilith to make money off of this and you and I both know that if there's ways for Lilith to make money they're going to take advantage of it they are not going to leave this free money on the table my last video was talking about how they just broke the two billion dollar mark in revenue go ahead and check that out if you're interested but probably the most interesting fact that points to us definitely getting season two legendary commander relics is that there already is one yes guys did you know charlemagne is a season two legendary look at the top here it says charlemagne is a season two legendary which means we already have a relic for a season two legendary commander in Charlemagne, which is weird because we don't have a Wu Zetian relic. Okay. And she is in a similar boat as Charlemagne. She was a KVK two reward. So we're going to talk about that later, but with Charlemagne's relic already existing, I think it's pretty safe to say, plus the other three bullet points we've talked about we're going to be getting season two relics now i already heard your question i already know what you're typing in the comments omniarch when is it coming okay that's why i clicked on this video well great news i don't know uh, i I have, no, I have no idea the rumors from a few months ago were obviously fake my guess though if you guys because i'm not gonna let you i'm not gonna let you leave here unsatisfied okay i'm gonna give you the omniarch timeline this is my assumption is that the soonest that we would see season two relics would probably be in january of 2023 I think that would be the soonest we could see it now I could be wrong it could be sooner than that but there's no signs pointing in that direction and I don't think the game really needs them right now but if they were to come out tomorrow or if Lilith reached out to me and said hey Omniarch we value your opinion we'd like to know what you think the relics should be for the season two commanders well today I'm gonna tell you guys what I hope for this is my wish list for these commanders we're gonna start with Alexander the Great because he's clearly a fan favorite and then we're gonna end with the mystery commander that I talked about earlier now the theory that I used behind constructing these make-believe relics is that I wanted them to sort of cover up a weak spot in the commander or really accentuate what that commander does really well and I also based it around how good that commander is currently performing in 2022 in season of conquest so for Alexander the Great if he were to get a museum buff what I would like to see him get is 10 percent infantry health and take five percent less normal attack damage now why did I pick these two things well if you take a look at the museum here okay it's pretty it's a pretty common trend that the commanders will either get one main stat and then an additional variable or they'll get two main stats as you can see here with Martel or Minamoto but if you look at someone like Mulan she gets a little bit of one stat and then an extra little variable there so that's sort of the strategy that I used for building these blueprints but from Alexander's perspective right he's doing a lot of really supportive and great things okay he has decent single target damage he's providing himself and other armies nearby with a shield which is very supportive by the way and he also gives you a nice combination of a, a ton of attack honestly a little bit of March speed and then in some instances he's getting defense but one thing that I think uh, Alexander really is lacking unfortunately uh, is a little bit of tankiness now I know he does have the shield and honestly if you look at his kit he's trying to do a little bit of everything and that's one of the reasons why he's so good because all of his skills work in the open field um, but he, at the end of the day he's really not that tanky or he's not at least as tanky as I would want him to be given the fact that he doesn't have like AOE for example right if you look at a, at a commander that has insane AOE and is a glass cannon like Zhang Yu or Nebu or YSG then I can sort of excuse them being a little bit on the on the weaker side because it's like you can't have both otherwise they're OP I'm looking at you CPO okay but regardless if I think if Alexander had 10 percent infantry health and took five percent norm, less normal attack damage I think that would put him in a really good spot now released at the same time as Alexander is his tanky no damage dealing cousin Constantine okay now Constantine is a great 5511 commander but he does come around in the mightiest governor which makes him a little bit less accessible for to play players that might want a 5511 commander and realistically while he is very supportive and a decent garrison in season two he uh he doesn't really deal any damage and he's also kind of a punching 
bag because he's really freaking slow have you ever tried using a Constantine in the open field dude he's so slow it's insane so I think a really cool relic for Constantine would be a 15 percent all damage increase now that I know I know that sounds like a lot I know that sounds like a lot and also a 15 percent March speed increase I think that would be very solid on Constantine now I know you're saying hey 15 percent damage Omniarch that's like insane what are you talking about Nebu's got it on this fourth skill okay Boudica gets 10 percent on her expertise I don't I, I just don't think 15 percent all damage for Constantine would really be a, a game changer for him because he's really just dealing such little damage I think that would make Constantine an even better secondary commander than he already is and he won't slow down that march to a point where it's just impossible to use because realistically Constantine falls off a cliff after season two just never used never and I'd love to see him make a return I think that'd be really cool now if Alexander isn't your favorite season two legendary then it's probably Saladin I know a lot of people love Saladin and he's a cool historical figure his design in the game is sick his skills are very good he's a, a low investment insanely good value everyone loves Saladin okay so if he got a relic people would be super excited about that but I will say he's already very good He's already he's a very good commander that doesn't need that much more in season of conquest i still see people use saladin in season of conquest and up until nevsky came out i did as well and i i actually want to continue using saladin i just i only have five marches right i only have so much gear that i can put on these commanders so we already know he's a little bit supportive he is very tanky some single target damage there what i would like to see on saladin is 5% cavalry health, right? Because he actually doesn't have any of that. He's very tanky, but he doesn't have any cavalry health. And I also would like to see 10% counterattack damage reduction. That would make him a little bit more tanky than he already is. 10% less counterattack damage would be nice considering he's not dealing AOE when he's surrounded. So I think that's a very nice addition that they could put on Saladin on top of that extra little 5% extra health, I think would just be a nice little buff to make him just put him a little bit closer to Nevsky right now. Cause I feel like Nevsky just really outclasses him like in every way. And same thing with CPO and Alexander. There's just a, there's just a big gap there next we're gonna move on to ugh, we're gonna move on to Genghis Khan boys Genghis Khan okay here's the thing about Genghis Khan okay uh, really nice single target damage factor considering the rage requirement is so low on him he's got some nice March speed on here interesting bonus damage and and whatnot but he's just not there he's just not there I think Genghis Khan needs a Minamoto level of relic buff what do I mean I would like to see 25 percent cavalry attack and 20 percent cavalry defense why do I think it should be so high because he literally has none look he has no cavalry stats on any of his skills he's got zero so by giving him this it at least brings him up to like the baseline this would put him right on sort of par with just what you would expect from a legendary and then on top of that he'll have a really nice rage requirement single target damage or whatever do I think this would make him usable probably not but you could do like maybe at that point a Zhang Yu with Khan rally and just you have to own the field otherwise it's just gonna pop like a balloon I don't know okay again the point of relics isn't to make them overpowered or to make them better than the current best legendaries it's just to sort of bring them back up to that point 45 percent of stats might be what we need for Khan to at least bring them back into the conversation next we're going to talk about banana helmet Edward of Woodstock now one thing that I want to tell you guys about uh Edward of Woodstock okay I'm pretty sure his expertise still doesn't work I made a video a long time ago I'm pretty sure Dragothian everyone like am I going am I crazy am I misremembering this didn't we talk about this a long time ago what's going on with his expertise guys you guys can comment down below correct me if I'm losing my my brain cells here but let's talk about Edward okay he's got insane single target damage factor except oh wait what's that Honda does the same damage except AoE. Oh, that's insane. Okay. So needless to say, Edward really lost his shine when Honda came into the game and even way beyond that. Let's let's be real. He hasn't been relevant since uh, he came out for season two. I think he's already got 30% of health, which is very good. I'd say give him 10% archer defense. Just make him slightly more tanky. I think that would be really nice and give him 500 bonus damage factor to his active skill. I want to see this at 3k. I want it to look like a nuke goes off when this guy dude the animation 
for Edward is so sick. It's just this gigantic bow and just boom. It looks cool. It looks satisfying, but it's not as good as it used to be. And I think if we bump it up to 3k, I don't know what the extra defense. Hey, maybe you might make a, you might be able to make the case for Edward when you first go into season of conquest. If you got nothing else for an archer rally, that's all I'm saying. Speaking of Edward rallies, you can't talk about an Edward rally without also talking about Tamiris. Okay. Now Tamiris has a very niche role and she's still used somewhat in season of conquest quest when you have people who have like artemisia and they need a secondary and, and i think tamira brings some nice utility and helps you swarm down some targets in the open field but she's not really what she was supposed to be she's a conquering commander for god's sake she's supposed to be taking down cities she's not supposed to just be poisoning a single target in the open field while everyone else kills it what i would like to see for artemisia is 15 percent archer defense to make her a little bit more tanky i mean she gets 30 percent attack but only when she's hitting cities and then deals less counterattack damage what but then she gains 10 percent counterattack damage back when she gets her expertise were they really scared that she was going to be op like what's going on here but realistically she only has archer attack okay so 15 percent defense i think would be good and then i would say give her 10 percent extra normal attack damage i think that would be really interesting for a commander with the attack tree and also you take a look at uh at edward the synergy there is that his expertise gives you 50 percent increased normal attack and counter attack damage so it sort of elevates that and i think that that would play with the synergy really nicely between these two commanders and even if you don't use her with edward even if you just use her as a secondary to somebody like artemisia for example 10 percent normal attack damage would make it pretty punishing to have to go up against her okay next let's talk about wu zetian at one point i remember wu zetian being an absolute savage garrison i remember when she came out if i saw an expertise to woo in the garrison i was like we're chilling bro we are chilling we got no problems with this flag we're just fine boys and it turns out woo is not really that great anymore okay she's just outclassed by so many new garrison commanders so what i think would be cool is give her 10% all damage. Okay. Just make her damage. Just let's crank up the damage output on this girl. She already gets 10% all damage, by the way. So give her 10% more. Just stack it on top of there. Throw it up there. And she gets 15% less skill damage taken, right? Let's go ahead and bump that up. Let's bump that up to 25. Okay. Let's give her an extra 10% skill damage taken reduction. Let's see how she fares in that instance. I feel like maybe, maybe she could be solid in a garrison or at least someone that you throw in as a secondary to someone. I don't know. It's just a shame that the one, the Empress, right? The, the Empress Wu, who used to be feared as a garrison commander is now not even talked about she's not even in the picture if you mention her it's a joke now i also want to talk about charlemagne okay because we are talking about season two commanders and as you saw this is technically a season two commander even though i would argue that he's pretty much worse than every other commander already in the game so would they add a second relic to charlemagne no I, I don't think so in fact if they did anything with charlemagne it would probably be to adjust his relic so let's go ahead and take a look at his current relic and that'll give us an idea as to what we're sort of working with here he gets 30 percent troop attack and 300 active skill damage factor that is not enough it's not enough okay he's just so bad that this wasn't even close okay so i think what we could do give him 40 percent troop health and 700 active skill damage factor okay bump that up to 700 and then we'll just see that would only put his active skill at 2100 we already have commanders like Boudicca and Nevsky that are dealing more than that okay and as far as the 40 percent troop health I mean sure it's universal for any troop type but I, I, I don't know I just feel like I feel like people probably wouldn't even still use him you let me know down below would 40 percent extra health and 700 extra skill damage actually move the needle needle for Charlemagne now let's talk about the mystery season two commander let's talk about the commander that Lilith forgot about. Let's talk about Lubu. Okay. Lubu came into the game and was forgotten almost immediately. He just was not good and he was part of a marketing gimmick. And then now you can't even get him. But he's so bad that I feel like they should give us a reason to use Lubu. I don't know. I just think it would be kind of cool. So if they gave a relic to Lubu, who you could easily make the argument that he needs one, and he also has no limitations to what kvk he can be used in so you could use him in kvk too i would say that 30 percent increased defense 
and 600 damage factor buff to his active skill would be a nice starting place okay because when he's expertise that means that his damage factor would be 1600 three targets but you gotta expertise him for that okay uh, but the troop defense i feel like would be really nice on him because he only has the the attack bonus here and he gets even more attack if he's with Dao chan but you're not using him with Dao chan let's just be honest okay that was just part of the marketing gimmick so the troop defense might give him the opportunity to get somewhat decent trades maybe and that's a big maybe because he's quite bad in this game but i do think that if they gave him a relic snaps would be very excited about that if you guys don't know who snaps is okay i made a video talking about his lu boo account go ahead and check it out on my channel anyway guys that is my wish list for season two legendary commander relics in rise of kingdoms i hope to see them at least by january of next year if not probably a little bit longer than that comment down below what you think of these buffs do you think that they're realistic do you think that they're too much do you think that they're not enough i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below as always while you're down there drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the youtube algorithm let me know if you like glasses omni or not glasses omni it's a rare glasses video today and while you're down there go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace